Hello, and welcome to video 17, which is actually just like video 7, except for the one on the left, but also we've added friction. So we have mass 2 hanging over a pulley connected to mass 1, which is on a table. This time there's going to be friction. So when we make our free body diagram, there'll actually be two forces in the direction of motion instead of just one. The process is actually pretty similar. We choose a direction of acceleration. Uh, by the way, the questions we're going to be asking aren't just um, what's the acceleration going to be because in the, initially it's not going to be moving at all. Um, what we want to know is what mass must mass 2 be to just barely get this thing to start moving. And we're going to express that in terms of the coefficient of static friction, friction when it's not moving. Once we know that mass 2, we're then going to determine, well, okay, what if it was moving? What if it starts to move? it's going to have a somewhat lower kinetic coefficient of friction and assuming some value mu k what would the acceleration of the system be and then finally we'll put in some values for m1 mu s and mu k and see what we get for m2 and a and we'll also look at the tension so if i was to draw a free body diagram for each of these objects you'd start off now with instead of just a tension acting on mass one we would also have a friction. And here, it may throw some people, but I'm going to draw it sideways. I'm going to call this M2G because the weight force is pulling in the positive direction, minus the tension. And we're going to write the equations of motion. So for the first object, when we add the forces, we're going to get T minus F, the friction, equals M1 times the acceleration of the system. Now, because this is a flat table, we can assume that the normal force up is exactly the same as the weight force down. And if you recall, let just write this up here, friction force equals mu times the normal force, whether that be static or whether it be kinetic. So that's going to be tension minus M1 G, which is the normal force, times mu, in this case mu s. So I'm going to write that as mu s times m1 g equals m1 a. So that's going to mean that the tension in this case is not simply going to be m1 a, there are now additional forces. So the tension is going to be equal to m1a plus mu s m1 g. Let's look at the second object, m2. When we write its equation of motion. It's going to be really similar to before. It's going to be m2g minus t equals m2a. So we're now at a familiar place where we have two things we don't know. We don't know the tension. We don't know the acceleration. I recommend solving for the tension, so let's do that. So when I bring this over here and this over here, we get that the tension equals m2g minus m2a. So I brought the t over here, subtracted the m2a, and then I just flipped them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to plug that back in to here. So when I do that, I'm going to get m2g minus m2a equals m1a plus mu s, static coefficient of friction, m1 times g. So now what I want to do is I want to group the a's and the g's together. So I'm going to bring this g over here. So m2g minus mu s m1g equals m1a plus m2a. Grouping terms, we get m2 minus mu s m1 times g equals m1 plus m2 times 
A, and solving for A, we get M2 minus mu S M1 times G over M1 plus M2. Now to solve for the M2 that will uh, exactly get it to start moving, uh, we're going to assume that this mu s m g, in other words, the friction force is the maximum uh, friction force you can get static. So what that's going to mean is we're going to still assume that the acceleration is zero. Now when we do that, this term disappears. Zero times m1 plus m2 is zero. Divided by g is zero. m2 minus mu s m1 equals zero. Or put another way, m2 that will just barely get this thing to start moving is equal to mu s m1. So this is the mass that will just barely get this thing to start moving. So that's the answer to the first question. But what if we want to know what the acceleration is going to be once this thing does start moving? Now, the math would be exactly the same. Let me just switch over to uh, blue. The acceleration is going to be exactly the same except that it's now going to be the kinetic coefficient of friction which will be somewhat lower than the static coefficient of friction over m1 plus m2 times g. Now, what I want to do is everywhere that I see an M2, I'm actually going to plug in US M1 because that's going to be the mass that we're using. That's what we decided. We're using the mass that just barely gets it to start moving. So instead of M2, I'm going to write mu S M1. This part stays the same. And on here, it's going to be M1 plus mu S M1 times G, and if you look, we have M1 in every term. So what you wind up with for the acceleration of the system once it gets going is just mu S minus mu K over 1 plus mu S. And as you might expect, it turns out the acceleration of the system doesn't actually depend on the masses involved because both the acceleration depends on the masses and the values of the friction forces depend on the masses so it makes sense that the acceleration shouldn't really depend on the masses but rather just on the coefficients of friction so we now have some accelerations now as far as getting particular values when we plug these in if I want to get the acceleration let me jump over to purple the acceleration is going to be mu s, which is 0 0.5, minus mu k, which is 0 0.3, over 1 plus mu s, which is 0 0.5, times g, which is going to give us an acceleration of uh, 0.2 over 1.5 g, which is going to equal 1.31 meters per second squared. So with these specific values, if new static is 0.5, uk is 0.3, once this thing starts moving, you're going to get uh, an acceleration of 1.31 meters per second squared. As long as we're at it, let's go ahead and solve for the tension. So the tension is going to be M2G, and we actually we didn't solve for M2. Let's go ahead and do that now. So that's going to be the mu static 0 0.5 times the mass 1, which we decided was 10 kilograms. So that's going to give us a mass 2, that is 5 kilograms. Now we can plug that in, and that 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared minus 5 kilograms 
times 1.31 meters per second squared. That's going to give us tension. Sorry, I normally do this ahead of time. But 5.8 times 5 minus 5 times 1.31. That's going to give us a tension of 42.5. Newtons. So the moral of the story is when you have friction, it's really the same problem except you're going to have to have an additional term here because T minus F equals MA instead of just T. So you have to make sure you count for that. This was the simplest kind of adding friction because the normal force is exactly the same magnitude as the weight force. When we do this on a ramp, uh, as you're going to see in video 10, if you haven't already looked at it, um, you have to use the normal force, which is going to be mg times the cosine of theta. But here it's just equal to the weight force, mg. Make sure you count for it. Uh, as always, I hope you found this video useful. See you next time.